Hey there, thanks for stopping by. Tonight we're gonna to be doing a Q&A, just kind of answering a few recent questions that came in on the YouTube channel. And to start with though, I just wanna tell you guys, sorry I've been gone for about two and a half weeks. I, I've been around, I've just been working for Selstrom's Heating and Cooling, which is uh, my dad's business. He was out of town and so I run the business when he's gone. So it was just really, really busy. I didn't have quite as much time to edit as I was hoping to. Now in addition to doing some Q&A, we're also gonna talk about the sale that's happening over at Olight. So this is gonna be a good way to kind of answer some questions and then I'll show you the different lights that they have for sale as we go through the questions. So the first question we're answering is from Henry. He says, how does it know what the different devices are? And he's asking specifically about the different devices that the Sense Home Energy Monitor can track. Because basically it's this little device that lives inside of your electrical panel. I'll link to a video in the description about it and also a discount code if you guys are interested in purchasing one. But basically the way that thing works is it tracks the electronic signatures of the different appliances in your home. Basically when you put toast down in the toaster, that's gonna to be a certain, certain number of watts that that appliance is gonna draw, and it's gonna draw them in a certain way. So they're able to aggregate data from a thousands of different houses and figure out most likely what appliances are doing what. And it does a pretty good job for a lot of your standard appliances. Now it can't get everything because some appliances are kind of weird in the way they draw electricity. So for example, my ECM fan motor in my furnace, for some reason the Sense Energy Monitor can't figure that thing out. And that's partially just because that ECM motor ramps up and down uh, based on how dirty the filter is and all that kind of stuff. So. It's not able to track everything perfectly, but it does a pretty good job and I really like it, especially for when we're gone or something and I wanna say, hey, is are the freezers in the garage running? I can check that or I can see that they were running in the past 24 hours or the well pump, if the well pump runs for too long, uh, that is really nice to be able to just see if the well is working or if it's been running for too long. Now, if I'm waving around a little bit too much here, it's because of the mosquitoes. The mosquitoes are kind of thick right now in Southwest Minnesota, and I'm doing this outside because the lighting is better than in the house. Okay, we're going to now look at our first O-Light, and that is going to be the open. As I mentioned earlier, Olight is having a sale. This is supposedly the biggest sale of the year that they have going on. So link right at the top of the description if you guys want to go over to their website and check out the pricing and the details. It'll all be right there. So go ahead and hit that link and then we're going to go ahead and open this guy up. This is the only one we're going to unbox. I'm pretty excited about this in particular because I do like to carry a pen as well as a flashlight on a regular basis. So it seems like it might be a really good combination. And there you can see the different uh, lumen outputs and how long it'll run at those different lumen settings. So the maximum it can put out is 120 lumens, which is plenty for the average application where you'll need just a little bit of light here or a little bit of light there. So there is the package that it comes in. And let's go ahead and slide this out of here. And right there is the pen itself. It comes with a USB cable as well as an extra ink refill, which is obviously really nice, especially when you're investing in a high quality pen like this. I have mosquitoes eating me everywhere, sorry. So there it is. It's a bolt action pen, as you can see. Super, super nice. The mosquitoes even like it. Gotcha. Ha, oh no. And there is the light. Double click for turbo. Super nice. So that is the O-Pen. Uh, again, link right underneath the video. Now let's go ahead and answer some more questions. Fernando asks, aren't you an electrician now? And this is a question that I get pretty often. Uh, people asking, hey, you're, you're an electrician, uh, you know, what, how do I do this particular thing? And actually, I'm not an electrician, nor have I ever claimed to be an electrician. I got started with electrical just because I wired my entire house from scratch uh, several years ago, and I read a whole bunch of books on electrical, on the National Electrical Code, as well as just wiring methods and practices. Now, since I work in HVAC and plumbing, I've worked around electricians pretty much my entire working life, but I have never technically been an electrician. And it's something that I'm considering doing. Actually, I would love to get my electrical license, but it's a five-year process to get your master electrician license, and you have to put in that 
40 hours a week for that period of time. So it's just really no easy or shortcut way to get your electrical licensing. So I don't know what will happen with that. I'm thinking about maybe starting my own electrical company, but I need to hire a master electrician to come and work for me so that I can start an electrical business so that I can apprentice underneath the master electrician that I hire. So if any of you are interested in moving to Southwest Minnesota to start a small electrical company with me, I would be super excited about that. So any of you guys out there who are retired and you want to just work kind of part time, I'll do all the grunt work and you can just come and hang out. We'll also be making videos together obviously because I'll continue the YouTube thing during that process. So let me know if you're interested in that. All right, the next question. Does this apply to the new window AC that is basically a split unit pinched into a window? So that's from Mark and he's talking about basically really efficient inverter style air conditioners that are just window units or what I like to often call them is like a PTAC unit which is obviously different than a window unit but he's right there are high efficiency units that can slide into a window opening or a pre-made opening for like a PTAC. A PTAC is like an air conditioner that goes through the wall uh, just like what you see in most hotels. So those units are really nice and if you're okay with them aesthetically, so if you would be fine with putting in a PTAC instead of a mini split, I would recommend a PTAC over a mini split. And the reasons for that are that it is a little bit easier to service. I wouldn't say it's a lot easier to service, but the installation is so much simpler. You're not dealing with running any refrigerant lines or anything like that. Uh, the only downside really is that it looks bad. So if you're looking at it from the outside of the house, you have this big rectangle thing hanging out the side of the building. That's kind of annoying. And they are louder. They're just going to be louder because you have that compressor that's right behind that, you know, evaporator that's right next to you in your living room or wherever you happen to put your unit. So a mini split does a better job of separating and moving that compressor further away so you don't have that sound so much. But by all means, if you're okay with it aesthetically, I would definitely do that before putting in a mini split if there's no other reason why you need to have it be a mini split. Now Darwin says, so the million dollar question, do you recommend building or buying? I think he's talking about building or buying a house. And in my opinion, I would buy all day long every day in most areas in the United States buying a house is cheaper much cheaper than than building a new home so I'm a big fan of finding a good deal on the worst house in the best neighborhood that's kind of the concept that I would go for uh, and then I love to remodel it's especially when you can save an old farmhouse like the one that uh, my wife and I worked on kind of saving a piece of history but that's all opinion so that's my two cents. Of course, if you live in an area where the cost of buying is as much as building a new home, then by all means, consider building a new home. Is that going to be a call center for multiple employees? And that is on my how many outlets on one breaker and room by room circuit layout video. It's a pretty old video. And I get comments all the time because I put a ton of receptacles down in my office and people have many different theories for why I did that. And to be honest, it's just so that I have lots of little spots where I can charge lots of little things. And I am super happy about the number that I put in there. Maybe I'll show you guys a quick clip of it. So right here is the editing room and the headquarters for Benjamin Selstrom's YouTube channel. And right here we have lots of those receptacles being utilized. That one down there being used for the computer. You can see there and there, those are empty, but then the next one is occupied, and the next one is occupied. I think there's one behind there that we're not using. And then this one over there has the camera battery charger. Gonna be using that in just a second. So a lot, some of the receptacles are not visible right now, but yeah, I mean, you can see why people thought maybe it was overkill, but it's pretty much perfect for what I need it for. So I guess that's kind of the main thing, right? It might just end up being a call center. I don't really know. If uh, one of you guys comes here and we start an electrical company together, then we probably will be taking phone calls down there. And I take a lot of phone calls down there every day. So right now it's a mini call center and video editing studio. All right, let's move to a different spot where we have a little bit more of a breeze because these mosquitoes are, are actually going to kill me, I think. I'm going to have West Nile tomorrow. Let's do that. 
Okay, so the next question from Nick is, my question is how is he getting nine amps out of a ground rod? I'm missing something. And that is in regards to the Will 120 volts to ground trip a circuit breaker where we've applied 120 volts from this panel right here over to this ground rod that is pounded into the ground. And basically, Nick, what we have going on is we're not getting nine amps out of the ground rod. We are basically using up nine amps. So we have 120 volts that we're pulling off of this panel and applying it to the ground rod and there's a certain amount of dirt between that ground rod right there and the ground rods that are connected to the neutral bus in that panel. So electricity is always trying to return to the source. So electricity goes out to this ground rod through the dirt and back up the grounding electrodes that are connected to the neutral bar over here. So it's using the ground or the dirt as the actual return path. Since the resistance of the dirt though is too high, it's not enough amperage to get that breaker to trip. So it's basically acting as like a heating element to be honest. It was not enough continuity for it to be able to pass that threshold to get that to trip. So it's just using up that power in the ground. It's just basically it's heating up the ground really slowly. I don't know if it would even be detectable, uh, but that's what it's doing. Okay, time to show you the next Olight that's on the sale. This one I'm the most excited about. Besides the pen, the pen's gonna be really useful, but this one right here is really, really nice. So this is a, a little light here. Let me just show you guys that the gun is clear. You can see right there, there is nothing in the chamber and nothing in the magazine. So we are good to go. Go ahead and drop the slide. And that O-light right there is actuated by your finger, just kind of right next to the trigger guard. And if we press that down, as you can see, there is a green laser that is built into this light. And the laser itself is actually in the lens of this little flashlight. So it's super handy and obviously we can control it to where we can have the light and the laser, just the light or just the laser on at any given time. So the way this uh, attaches, you open this little lever right here and then once the lever is released, you press it on the side and that releases it in such a way that you, are, you can snap this in. This little groove right here attaches to one of the grooves on the end of the barrel. This adjusts forward and back. Get that in position. Now we pull, pull the light all the way back until it comes in contact with the trigger guard. And now it is totally in place. Wow. So now if I just press down on either side, it goes and turns on the laser, the light, or whatever. And to, sw to switch it back and forth, I'm just gonna press back and forth on the bottom between the light and laser, laser, or just the light, these right here. And then the magnetic charger just snaps right on the bottom to magnetically charge the uh, light up, which is really sweet. Uh, so let's go ahead and turn it on. So laser only. Yep. You see that? Laser and light. So there's light and laser. Yeah. And you can see the laser in the middle there. And then there's just the light. Light, light and laser, and laser only. Sweet. So this is actually a really good deal on their sale if you have a small handgun like this. Uh, this is the Ruger SR22, so it's just a 22 caliber uh, semi-automatic pistol. But if you have, you want a really compact light that has an integrated laser, definitely check this out on the sale. Link is right underneath the video. Great video. Can you use 30 amps for a 12,000 watt generator? Uh, the answer is yes, kind of. Isn't uh, 30 amps come out to be something like 7,200 watts? somewhere in there. Uh, so you actually won't be able to use the full potential of your generator, but typically a 12,000 watt generator will have a 30 amp plug on it. Um, basically what's gonna happen is you're going to eventually use enough electricity from your generator where the breaker on the generator or the power inlet breaker is going to trip. So you just won't be able to take full advantage. So if, in your case, it'd be better to have a 50 amp uh, inlet plug built into your uh, interlocked breaker if at all possible. But it should still work fine with a 30 amp breaker. So Larry asks, 
Question, when adding a sub-panel in a garage from the main panel, don't you have to add ground rods near the garage at least six feet apart? Also, is the ground wire necessary from the main panel to the sub-panel? Thank you for the help and great video. This is on the how to install a sub-panel start to finish. Uh, this question is really, really a good question. Uh, and it's something that is not very clear. I've seen a lot of comments about this concept. So I'm thinking to make a dedicated video to this particular topic. But basically, you can see right here, we have a panel uh, that is feeding the property. We have a big 200 amp panel in the house over there. And then I'm going to have a smaller panel over there in the garage. So with that then, basically we have sub panels in each of those buildings that are fed from this one right here. So the question is, do you have to have ground rods at those other uh, buildings? And the answer is yes. If it is a separate structure, you need to have additional grounding electrodes for that structure. And by code, if you can't prove the resistance to the ground, so if you when you add a ground rod, you either have to measure the resistance and it's supposed to be like 25 ohms or less, and then you can get away with one ground rod, or you can avoid testing uh, by just putting in two ground rods. So that's why any separate structure, just put in two ground rods at least six feet apart, connect those to your panel in that separate structure, and you're good to go. But now, the more important part of his question is, do I need to run a ground wire from the main panel to the sub panel? And this is where people really can go wrong and create some really dangerous situations. For a long time, you only had to run a total of three wires to a separate building for power. So you have two hot wires and a neutral, which also acted as the ground because the grounds and neutrals were tied together if it was a separate structure up until like 2008, if I remember correctly. After 2008, however, you're supposed to run a total of four wires, two hots, a neutral, and a ground wire. So if you follow my video about how to install a sub-panel, I explained that the neutrals and grounds need to be separated in order for that to be a correct installation. However, if you didn't run a separate ground wire, that can create a majorly hazardous scenario where you could have neutrals and grounds that are separated in a sub-panel in a separate structure. Even if you connect ground rods properly, if you have a dead short to that grounding wire or those grounding electrodes, that will not clear the fault. You're going to end up drawing like 9 amps or 10 amps like we just talked about in the previous question. So it is absolutely essential that you have that same grounding system. So those grounding electrodes that are over there in the garage need to have a ground wire attached to them that goes back to right over here where our other grounding electrodes are connected to our neutral panel. We need to have a return path so that the electricity can get back to the source and ultimately clear the fault. So yes, you need ground rods and yes, you need a separate ground wire for a sub panel in a separate building. Now, if it's a sub panel in the same building, you still need a ground, a neutral and two hots but you do not need to put in extra grounding electrodes. So if you're just gonna put another sub panel right next to the panel that you have, or if it's in the same building, you don't have to add more ground rods. You only add more ground rods if it's in a separate building. All right, time to look at another light. <laughs> Kinda need a break in between these questions. It's an Olight. This one's supposed to be pretty awesome. It's a pretty awesome Olight ring. If you um, are interested, the link is in the description. Yeah, put in the discount code BEN at checkout. To get 10% off. 10% off your order. This lap, how much lumens is it? I don't know. 1,100, eh? It's specifically designed to have a really, really long throw. Mm -hmm. So, you want to say 1,000 meters? 1,000 meters, that's actually pretty far. Thanks for being uh, featured in this video. Yeah, no problem. You guys recognize that guy? That's Jay from Word of Advice TV who just opened up that uh, Warrior X Turbo. And uh, he is actually going to be on the channel on this Saturday at 10 a.m., somewhere around there. We're going to be posting a collaboration video, which should be really, really fun. So if you guys are around or available on Saturday morning, that's when those videos should go live. So we're excited about that. We've been thinking about doing that for quite a while at this point. Okay, so this light is pretty cool too. This is the Warrior X Turbo. This is designed to be a super long throw flashlight. Look at how cool that, uh, that lens is in there. But this thing can throw up to a thousand meters. I think it's around 1100 lumens. Uh, you can check the details on their website. But if you look at how we can 
see that in broad daylight. Can you guys see that on the tree there? We're, it's not quite broad daylight, it's the evening right now, but um, it is a very powerful light. One thing I really like about it, of course, is the magnetic charger, but in addition to that, this tail cap is the style just like the Odin, and the Odin has a remote switch that snaps and locks in place on the end of the flashlight. So I really like that they put that same uh, tail cap on there so that you can use this with a remote switch that locks in place should you want to do that. So. Definitely would recommend this. Uh, really have enjoyed using this. I took this out fishing with my cousin Darren. So I'll go ahead and show you some of that footage here right now. We put pennies on this track before. So check this out. This is really neat. Um, so we're out here at the lake. Let's turn on full brightness. And we can see how far that beam can go. So, right now it's still pretty bright out. You can clearly see the beam way over on that furthest tree. So we'll have to measure and see how far that is exactly. But, you can see how nice and clear it is. Especially when it gets a little bit closer on the shoreline. If I look in the light, I, I can't see my bobber anymore. Okay. <laughs> it looks really cool. I wish you could see what I can see. <laughs> it's probably really annoying, but I promise it's worth it. Ooh! Okay, that looks really cool. That is really neat. Okay, I'm gonna do that to Darren. Darren, this is gonna be worth it, I promise, okay? Maybe. There you go, Darren. <laughs> you should catch one right now, please. We're ready for you to catch one. Looks pretty cool, huh? So if you guys want to uh, see some fishing videos, Darren is just kind of starting his YouTube channel. And so it'd be awesome if you go over there. I'll throw a card right up here and a link in the description so you guys can subscribe to his channel. Tell him what kind of videos you guys want to see that involve fishing because he's kind of in that process of figuring out what type of content to make. So if you have any input, uh, go subscribe to Darren's channel and let him know what you're thinking. Okay, let's do a few more questions here before I show you the final two lights. And those are, do not use your crescent wrench as a hammer. You will screw it up and will not, and it will not close completely. Thank you so much for telling me that. I really appreciate that very much. Uh, Farmer Dave. Thank you, Farmer Dave. I will try not to use my crescent wrench as a hammer. Although, you know, you can get them for so cheap that it feels like it doesn't even matter when you're using a made in China crescent wrench that costs you five bucks. It's just... I don't know, it's handy, it's heavy, so it must be a hammer, right? What if your main panel is full and nowhere to put a 100 amp breaker? Uh, that is a good question and it's a simple answer. If you're putting your sub panel somewhere close by, you can just move a couple of circuits from your old panel into what will be your future sub panel. That's probably the easiest way to do it. Uh, or you can look into getting some tandem breakers, which is going to allow uh, two like 20 amp breakers or 15 amp breakers on the same single space. So make sure that you check with your panel manufacturer to see that that is uh, allowed in your type of panel. It should give you a total number of circuits that are allowed in your panel, not based on just the spaces, but just uh, the total number of circuits that are allowed and the maximum number of tandem breakers that you can have. So there's two ways of going about that. And what do you think of Duramax generators? What motor manufacturer do they use? As far as I can tell, Duramax is a dirt cheap Chinese knockoff generator company. And I have one of their generators and it works fine. Uh, if you're gonna spend money on a generator though, and you want to buy something that's quality, not just cheap, then don't buy Duramax. In my opinion, they're not in the top five even of generator manufacturers. So go with a Honda or a Yamaha or something that has a long track record that is gonna serve you better. And I don't know what kind of engines they use. I think they're like basically Honda or Briggs and Stratton clones that the Chinese have copied as usual. What brand of wire cutters do you use? Great question. I use both Nipex and Klein. So if I was gonna recommend one in particular, I'd probably choose Klein since they are mostly made in the United States. But Nipex makes some really excellent stuff as well. In some of my early on videos, I used the cheapest whatever generic thing I found laying around and it worked fine. So that's an option as well. 
Okay, and finally, let's take a look at these last two O-lights that we have here. Uh, this is the M1T Raider Plus. So this light right here, I don't like it at all. I almost don't like anything about it. And actually, it just comes down to one thing that it's missing, and it's that is that it's not rechargeable. It uses these lithium batteries that once they're burned up, they're burned up, and you have to buy new ones. So I don't know if you can get rechargeable batteries that are in this size, but you can see right there on it, it says, do not recharge. So I don't know. It's just like, why would you even bother buying a light that is non-rechargeable? I guess the lithium batteries like last a really long time, like have a super long shelf life. And this thing does have some really good output. In fact, it works very similarly to the tiny little one that I carry all the time, which is the i i5T EOS. And this thing is super nice because it's just a standard AA battery. And so I have a, just a nice rechargeable battery in there. And I use this thing all the time, every day. And finally, the last one, they're giving these away if you share their link or something like that. Uh, this is just a little keychain light. This thing is actually kind of impressive. So when you tighten it down, the first mode comes on, and that's a dimmer mode, and then tighten it a little bit more, and the brighter mode comes on. And then the neat thing about this is it's rechargeable still. We just take it apart like that, pop it open, and there is a micro USB charging port. Wish it was USB-C, it's not. It's micro USB, but so be it. It's fairly inexpensive, and for it being a little keychain light, I'm just happy that it is rechargeable. Like I just said, I don't really like things that are not rechargeable. By the way, I don't think I mentioned earlier, but the uh, O-Pen, charges via USB-C right there. So when you take the uh, pen apart, uh, you can actually use the light separately from the pen. So if you need to uh, write in the dark, you'll be able to separate that pen and the light and be able to use both at the same time. I'm pretty sure I'm gonna be carrying this thing like everywhere I go for the foreseeable future. So it's nice that obviously it's refillable and all that too. And of course, bolt action is really cool. Although a more American pen would be a lever action, right? Because the lever action was the original uh, firearm action that the United States came up with, if I remember right. All right, so I want to talk about Olight a little bit and uh, my relationship with them. Uh, they reached out several months ago, and obviously you guys have seen that I've promoted their stuff a few different times. And uh, the reason that I'm working with them is that their products are really high quality products. And I really enjoy using their flashlights and they're things that I would have bought anyway and that's kind of the whole idea is I don't really want to recommend things to you guys that I wouldn't buy myself so I've just been happy with their stuff and so I'm happy to promote them because I know that generally you guys are also going to be happy with their products and I just want to be transparent with you guys as far as how much they're paying me and it really comes down to just commission-based sales with with the exception of the fact that they do send me their lights uh, they don't pay me for these videos it's only if you guys choose to use that link right under the video then I get a 10% commission on the sales that are driven there. So if you guys do want to support the channel, then use that link if you're going to buy some stuff over there. Or if you don't want to support the channel specifically, you can go to olight.com and don't use my link and then uh, I will, won't get any commissions. So if for some reason you don't want me to get a commission, that's how you do it. You can also get a discount on their non-sale items uh, if you just put in the discount code BEN at checkout. So just type in B-E-N and you'll be able to get 10% off your order assuming that those items are not currently on one of their flash sales or something like that. I don't know that I really like doing sponsor spots or working with sponsors that much. Like I really, I appreciate the opportunity and I like uh, a lot of these products obviously, but uh, it seems like quite a few of you guys are bothered every time I put some sort of an ad or otherwise in these videos. And so that bums me out because I want to serve you guys best, but I also have to figure out how to raise money for this YouTube channel and the future of both my family and the channel. So right now, there's not much crowdfunding that I have going on for the channel. I do have a Patreon account set up, uh, but so far I think there's one person that's uh, giving $4 per uh, month towards the channel. So I really appreciate that one person doing that, uh, but it's not really enough to make up for not having sponsors. So maybe someday if more of you guys contribute, I'll be able to work towards 
just dropping all sponsors totally and I can just focus exclusively on the content that I'm making. But for now, uh, I still have to work with raising, raising a little bit more money for the channel and one of the main ways to do that is to work with sponsors. So if you guys have ideas for how I could integrate sponsors into the channel a little bit better, uh, I've been kind of experimenting in a previous video, I had kind of a long section about Olight, uh, but that didn't seem to go over super great. So um, I'm gonna try to shorten that and maybe have like a one minute uh, ad that I put into every video. Cause in my mind, it's probably just as good or better for me to have my own one minute ad versus having multiple mid-roll ads that YouTube puts in there automatically. So here's my question to you guys. Do you want me to make separate videos with sponsors where I do a Q&A? It's basically a Q&A video like we just did along with my sponsor spot basically for the week or every two weeks and then have my main video be totally ad free or should I put like a one minute ad in my main video? So let me know what you guys think. I'll put a few different options uh, on the screen here and you guys can vote to help me kind of figure out what the best way to integrate those ads is going to be. If you guys made it all the way to the very end of the video, uh, thanks for being here. I really appreciate you. You guys are my core base of people that I can count on when I post videos and what I would consider to be my core group. So if you made it to the end, put in the hashtag Minnesota Mosquitoes because why not? Then I'll know that you made it to the end. <laughs> so thanks a ton for watching and we'll talk to you guys on Saturday. In the meantime, check out the sale over at Olight if you're interested. And please forgive me if you're not interested. I'm sorry for having to uh, make a living. I don't know how to do it without offending people. All right, uh, let's go down to the basement and edit this video really quick. I don't think it's gonna be possible to edit this video quick, but we'll, we're gonna try it anyway. So we've got iced coffee. Darren and I are about to go on a fishing adventure. He's gonna maybe make a fishing video about how to fish with crickets. Mm -hmm. And I am gathering some footage for uh, probably some advertisements that my subscribers will hate me for. <laughs> so it's great. Um, I even gave you a spoon. This spoon, I saved it from Chipotle. Oh, nice. Because they're so nice. They're so nice. The plastic is just so strong. <laughs> it is so strong. <laughs> you guys be nice to each other. Do you understand? Be nice to each other. I know that you like sugar, so I put extra sugar in yours. Uh, if for you guys who don't know, Darren does this on the side. See that orange thing? That's what he does. Right. Yep, that means that he delivers all the packages. He probably has been to your house before. <laughs> Most likely, if you're watching this, you've probably been to your house. We're off like a dirty shirt. Oh. Like a cow pie and hit the trail. Like a herd of turtles. Like a baby and head out. <laughs>